in recapping this third day after the disastrous earthquake in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, a 7.0, six miles beneath the surface. For an example, for comparison, the one at Northridge, California in 1994 was more than 11 miles beneath the surface, and you can guess what the impact means when it's that much closer uh, in terms of uh, vertical uh, relativity. Uh, I think I made a, a mathematical mistake. I believe it was out of uh, wishful thinking. The correct number believed homeless and or injured is not two million, but three million. That number that the Red Cross has estimated, as you see on your screen, 45,000 is the, the minimum they're expecting. Uh, it could be as much as 50,000. I guess that's good news compared to numbers we were talking about last night. It is still horrifying, and it is having a toll now as this becomes a humanitarian crisis. We're joined again from the Save the Children organization in Port-au-Prince by Kate Conrad. And I, I, I just wanted to get you to react to something that a colleague of yours from Oxfam told us, Louis Belanger, who said this is a humanitarian crisis and we're right at that tipping point where it's possible to salvage much of this if the, if the relief effort can somehow be accelerated, if some breaks are caught and things like water and food get to these people in the next 12 hours. Is that the window that you're thinking of? Um, I don't know that I'd put a window on it. It's dark right now, and there's nothing that could be, really be done. But absolutely, um, we, we need to catch some breaks, and we have to understand that this is a major nat natural disaster that came that sort of overlays what was a what was an ongoing humanitarian crisis here with 80 percent of the population living under the poverty level most people were on the edge before this happened they are still recovering from the hurricanes of late 2008 there were four um so there there were desperate times then people didn't have work um the malnutrition rates and and uh Children, children are the most vulnerable. So, yeah, I think I, I hope we catch some breaks, and it would be great. It would be great to see, yeah, more planes and more stuff come in. And I think it's possible. Um, it's very difficult in the early days in any disaster um, to get aid in. Um, it's never quick enough, and it's never enough in the first 72 hours. It's, uh, it's, it's almost heartless to try to compare this to other things, other places, other nightmares that we've witnessed uh, uh, through television. Most of us and people like you have witnessed uh, with your good hearts uh, in the locales, but you were in Banda Aceh after the Indian Ocean tsunami. And I guess I'm asking this question in terms of that, that uh, uh, financial structure, that societal structure, comparing what, what that world was like before the tsunami and the effect the tsunami had on the entire environment to what the world was like for the residents of Haiti before this disaster and what it is now. Is there a way to compare these two events in, in terms of their, to their, their total effect on the two societies? I, I, don't, I don't think you can really compare disasters. I mean, both were horrific. Um, and, I, and I wasn't actually in Aceh, um, but my colleagues were. Mm -hmm. What happened there, uh, I was in Indonesia in November for the earthquake in Padang, mm -hmm. but in Aceh it helps actually stop a civil war, or at least they came to the peace table. Um, but you can't, it's, it's human misery, it's, it's something we all need to respond to. It's very important that the, that the global community mobilize to help, you know, people sort of there, but for the grace of God, go I. Kate Conrad of uh, Save the Children in Port-au-Prince, as we said earlier, thank you and, and all the best. Good luck. Thanks. Let's hope we get that break. Thanks for having me.